Well, here we are. It's August the 30th. It's time to talk some lacrosse, baby. It's time, baby. It's time to talk a whole lot of lacrosse. There's a lot of things we need to go over as the PLL's regular season has come to an end. Let's start off there. You can see the standings. Not much really changed. Um, you know, some things got kind of flipped here and there with the uh, middle portion. But the top stayed the same. The bottom stayed the same. And, I mean, the scores, you look at it. I mean, the Archers lost their last game to the Water Dogs, but it didn't matter. Again, the Archers already locked up the one seed in Week 9 in Seattle against the Whips. Um, Atlas are still just unable to close out games. You know, they lost to the Cannons by one, then they got beat by the Redwoods by five. Redwoods bounced back with a couple big wins. Chaos split. They lost to the Water Dogs, and then they beat the Lowly Cannons in their final regular season game. The Whips lost their last couple games. They end at a zero score differential, four and six. Uh, we get Chaos 5-5, five five, the Dogs 7-3, Cannon 7-3, um, Atlas 2-8, Chrome 1-9. So the matchups are Cannons, Atlas, Water Dogs, Whips and Eights, and Redwoods Chaos. And, I mean, I have a lot of things to really kind of nosh over about the PLL right now. Again, this season for me has just not hit as hard. Uh, it's not, and it, and it wasn't just these last couple weeks with the games, you know, being more West Coast minded as far as, you know, like being in Seattle and Salt Lake City, you know, I, I didn't really have the time to watch all these games. I didn't really have time to look at the highlights either. Um, but, you know, there's going to be a lot of things going into the playoffs again. I think first things first, we got to get a couple things I don't care for out of the way. Or other things that may matter, but ultimately I don't think they matter as much because these were things that are kind of givens. First things first, street lacrosse is a thing. No, I no, no don't don't ask me what don't ask me why. Well, another type of lacrosse, I guess. It's not not really another type of lacrosse. It's kind of like you know picking up a game of basketball in your backyard or something like that. Um, I don't particularly care for it already. Um, KD's involved, so, you know, that's interesting, I guess. The Chrome, again, probably the worst lacrosse team I think I've seen in a long time. Like, like, how did this team win a game? They were that bad. A negative 38 score differential. How do you, how, I don't even get it, but we... Kind of knew as the season progressed that this Chrome team wasn't going to get any better. They traded away Jackson Morrill to the Whip Snakes uh, for more draft picks, and they're going to win the Brennan O'Neill sweepstakes more than likely. They're, it will probably be him at number one come May 2024. It will probably be him. He's the, he was the only guy that stepped up and suited up for the U.S. in the – World Lacrosse Championships, at least the field world championships, anyway, for the 2023 edition. Um, the Whips, again, they have they have a problem that they're going to encounter against my Water Dogs. Here, McCardo, Michael Sowers, a balanced attack. Dylan Ward in the cage. Whips, you know, they be, again, they'd be kind of under the radar. Again, if it weren't the top, you know, if it weren't the Basically, the entire league getting in the playoffs except the last team, you know, I would say this Whips team does not deserve to be in anything playoff-related, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, kind of weird, kind of bad, but, um, you know, Andy Towers, he's going to get Josh Byrne back. Dane Smith, along with Jeff Teat, by the way. Both those guys lead the league in assists. I mean, this could get interesting for Andy Towers' the squad. This could get real interesting. Uh, again, Atlas, they still have Trevor Baptiste. They still have Jeff Teat. They still have all these guys, but can they get out of their own way? They haven't been able to, but we've seen this before where 
you know, with that chaos team that went to the championship with only two wins in the regular season. We saw that, and it could happen again. Atlas had the talent. They just haven't been able to capitalize at all. And the MVP, um, I know I said Ryder Garnsey should have won it, but honestly, the way Marcus Holman has just been on a tear for the Cannons, along with Asher Nolting, both of those guys lead the league in points. You know, uh, I mean, it's just both of them have been on fire. And the Archers, Carter Fields, they're going to have to defend that number one seed that they've earned. It's going to be difficult for them. It always is in the PLL for the number one seed. And, I mean, you look at this playoff bracket, we are going to see it here. Let me move myself up a little bit. So you look at it. Cannons Atlas will be that game that will kick us off. Um, you know, that or rather it will be the only game that will be actually on an ESPN network again, the US Open, you know, ESPN's little, you know, talk shows in the morning. Again, this is this is a must see type of day. This is a must stay on on your couch. You know, with with some bills, with some food right at your side, type of day with all this lacrosse, all this playoff lacrosse, and yet only one game is actually going to be on an actual ESPN network, not ESPN Plus. And again, you get a quarterfinal, you get a semifinal, and you get the championship on television. All six games really should be televised, but it's just the way the mouse works, and it's just the way. You know, people are people, they're trying to get people to get ESPN Plus and everything like that. So, you know, the real interesting matchups again. I don't really care for Atlas at all because they just they just can't get out of their own way. Um, I'm not sure who's going to face the Archers. I think I downloaded the wrong part of the bracket because they they updated the bracket a little bit, so it should be the Archers taking on. Uh, you know, it, it could be like the Redwoods of the Gales. I, I don't, I don't remember. I, I forgot how the brackets work, but that's that should be how the bracket works, um, and everything like that. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this all goes down. And again, the, the championship series has also been set. That top four of Archers, Cannons, Water Dogs, and Redwoods—they're going to be a part of the 2024 championship series again. At sixes, I do not care for sixes. A lot of people. Don't really seem to care for sixes either. Um, there's a big divide on that, but it is what it is. So, PLL playoffs, I'm ready. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be during – yeah, the semis and the championship are going to be during NFL games. Yeah, the Labor Day, you know, quarterfinals isn't what I anticipated it to be because, again, if, if the Rabble brothers actually use, you know, you know, actually had some common sense – you know, all these games will be televised. You know, you don't, you know, you're going to have to just, you know, get ESPNU. I mean, again, the viewership for this season has just not been not been too kind. I'll say definitely probably beats out any MLS game, but not a WNBA game. Definitely not a WNBA game. Um, you know, yeah, there were some good moments as far as viewership goes. Yeah, there were some great games this year in the PLL. But ultimately, there's just been too many factors. The shot clock um, being at 32 seconds, the lack, you know, of real face-off guys, you know, games have been getting kind of out of hand with the scoring a little bit, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, I prefer a defensive slugfest at times. That's what I think I've catered to in lacrosse as well. I, I love it in football. I love it in lacrosse too. Apparently, I love it. In, I also love it in basketball. I love it. Defensive slugfest. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know people are so excited about you know offense, 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 but I like defensive slugfest for whatever reason. So we're gonna have a real good, interesting quarterfinals, and man, I, I'm excited. So at least that one game I'm definitely watching. That's gonna be on TV. Course. So the Man Cup, it's also said, and boy, oh boy, I've been waiting to talk about this one. Boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy. New Westminster and Langley duped it out for seven straight games, and New Westminster got the W. Um, I believe that last game was 12 to 7. And 
man, first time in, what, six years that New Westminster will be playing for a Man Cup. They haven't won it in, I think, 30 years. Six Nations. They sweep Peterborough in four games. Easiest sweep I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And I was just flabbergasted at the fact that Six Nations just swept Peterborough like this. Because, again, Peterborough had a lot of talent as well. But yet, at the end of the day, the the, the, the Lyle Thompson show, boy, oh, boy, that medicine is really working. That medicine is really working for Mr. Thompson. Boy, oh, boy. And, I mean, the Man Cup is going to start September the 8th. Hopefully, these games are streamed on, you know, like YouTube or something like it was last year. I really hope that's the case. Um, if it's streamed on the Western Lacrosse Association's website, I am not looking at that because – the WLA charges like twenty dollars a game or something like that, or however much. And it's like that's that's not reasonable for me. Not reasonable for anybody to charge like what nine, ten bucks a game for a game. Come on now. Um, so yeah, New Westminster again. You know a lot of these guys: Hey Dixon, Zach Higgins in the cage, Will Malcolm, Mitch Jones, the captain, Adrian Sorchetti just going to be real interesting to see how this dynamic of the salmon bellies goes up against the chiefs and i mean the wall warren hill i mean my goodness that man has been on a tear in the cage the stocks brothers austin randy they're going to be kicking shane jackson and of course the man himself lyle thompson he's itching for a man cup he's itching for it He's really itching for it. We are going to have one hell of a man cup. Good time for some lacrosse. And in the Mento Cup, the Burlington Blaze, Deacon Knight. Remember that name. I told y'all, remember that name. Deacon Knight. Burlington, they beat uh, the Adnax of Coke Lamb in the championship round in two games. They swept them after the round robin. Congratulations to Burlington and everything like that. I think I skipped over something. I think I skipped over something. Hold up. Yeah, I did. I did skip over something. I knew I skipped over something. The NLL. Yeah, I skipped over the NLL. So there's been a lot of player development type stuff. You know, the entry draft is on September the 16th. So that's in like tw like less than 20 days, like three less than three weeks away. You have the junior NLL tournament. Those games were on YouTube, I think. Um, the National Collegiate Box series i hope i got that right i think that's what they call it those championships took place from the 13th to the 16th i do not care who won those but these these are all things that are developing players you know in the box game and then there's been some major signs that the nl has at least reposted on their twitter you know and it's mainly just san diego and colorado also a panther city signing tyler digby but you know dylan ward has been re-signed chris wardle has been re-signed paul dawson you know, is coming over to Colorado from Rochester, and Andrew McBride is the new assistant GM for the Mammoth in San Diego. They got Kyle Jackson for four years. I don't know how they did it, but they got him for four years. Jordan Hall is going to be the offensive coordinator, and the big rig Chris Oleglary, he's been re-signed. Big-time goalie for the Seals has been re-signed. So there it is. There you have it, everybody. Um just man I, I i'm excited beyond excited to hopefully hopefully i'm watching the man cup this year i'm hoping that we can actually watch man cup this year i watched you know what i could from you know earlier in the summer of you know games from last year but i'm, I'm excited for this year's man cup i'm excited for the pll playoffs uh, i'm i'm ready i'm ready the nl schedule should be released sometime in september so hopefully by the time the pl championship is done we'll have the you know, schedule i'll be ready to break all that down and that will pretty much do it from here um i think we're going to come back in about a week or two in about a week or so with you know talking about the pl quarterfinals and you know you know, at least, I don't know, I may, you know, just kind of wait a little bit and just wait all the way until the PLL championship. You know, I'm definitely probably going to do something to, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm 
kind of pulling videos from a hat here. But uh, again, the Man Cup starts to the eighth. The PLL quarterfinals, which will kickstart the playoffs, will start on September fourth. That's Labor Day, United States Labor Day, anyway. So we we have a lot coming. We have a lot coming. So it's coming down to it. PLL championship will conclude the twenty. 20- 22 to 2023 season from this channel at least and then we'll start it all up again in december with the nll kicking off sometime probably that last week of november that last weekend going into december that's more than likely when the nll will kick off you know or rather face off excuse me not kick off i'm thinking of football we'll talk we'll talk football talk nfl tomorrow um so yeah that, that's gonna do it from here big boy sports is signing out and i'll see you all tomorrow night to talk the nfl i got some season preview thoughts on the nfl so take care everybody yeah i'll see you tomorrow <laughs>